have a blogging application here, which is a little bit unique because it supports multiple blogs. I have three different blogs, as you can see here, one for pirates, ninjas, and robots. And when I click on a specific blog, I get a list of articles which are associated with that blog. Now what I would like to do here is clean up this URL a bit so instead of using a path to reference a blog, it uses a subdomain. Now I already have a subdomain field inside of the blogs. You can see if I edit a specific blog here, I have the subdomain field that is filled in. And so I just want to reference this and link it up to each blog. So for example, what I would like to do is be able to add a subdomain to the URL here, such as pirates, and then have that go to that specific blog. Now there are a couple of issues with this, the most prominent being that adding a subdomain to localhost like this doesn't point to the Rails application, so there's no way to catch this URL. Now one quick solution to this is to use an external domain that points to our local host. One is at lvh.me, and that points to our local host, so it goes to our Rails application. And I can use any subdomain on here, such as pirates, and then that will also point to our Rails application. Now if you're on Mac OS X, another solution is to use the PAL server. Just takes a few commands to set this up, and then once you do, you can access your Rails application with a URL such as blogs.dev, and then that will go to that application. And subdomains will work here as well, so you can access your app through subdomains too. Now currently, adding the subdomain points to the same location, but that's easy enough to change through routing. So here's what the routes file looks like for this application, and we need to add another route so that it points to the blog's show action instead of the blog's index action when a subdomain is provided. So we can do that by calling, let's say, match, match a blank URL, which will be the root URL, and then we can point that to the blog's show action, but only if a subdomain is present, and we could do that with a constraint. So add a constraints option here, and specify the subdomain option, and set it to, uh, let's say, this regular expression, so that it only takes place if a subdomain exists. By the way, it's important that this subdomain route be placed above the root route, otherwise this root route would take precedence and always be triggered. Basically, you always want to put the more specific routes higher up in the routes file. Now we could try this out and see if it works. So let's first try a URL without a subdomain, and it points to the same blogs page, so that works. But if we add a subdomain here, like pirates, then that is going to the blogs controller show action, as you see here, but it is raising an exception because no ID is provided for it to fetch the blog by. Now if you look inside of the blogs controller show action here, you can see this exception makes sense because we're trying to find the blog based off of the ID parameter, which is not passed in. Instead, we want to fetch blogs based off of the subdomain, so we can call find by subdomain here, and then pass in the subdomain, which is the request dot subdomain. Now, if we try reloading this page here, you can see it works. We now go to the proper blog matching that subdomain. But if we pass in no subdomain, then it just goes back to the blogs list. Now, the next thing we have to do is make it so that the link themselves go to that proper subdomain, because if we try clicking this, it's actually going to go to the path instead of including the subdomain. To fix this, we need to change the link inside of the blog's index template here. This is where we have the link to that specific blog, and right now I'm just passing in the blog model directly to the link to call. But instead I want to call root URL here and change the subdomain to the blog subdomain. And this subdomain option on root URL here is new in Rails 3.1. Uh, if you're using an earlier version of Rails, check out episode 221 for how to do this. Now I could try this again by clicking on a specific blog, and this time it takes me to the proper URL with the right subdomain. Yay! Now when you're working with multiple subdomains like this, you likely want to nest other resources so they're only accessible through that matching subdomain. For example, I can click on one of these specific articles here to access that given article. But I'm currently able to, if I know the proper ID, access other articles through the same subdomain. For example, this article is for robots, but I'm able to access it through the pirate subdomain. So to fix this, you need to go to that specific controller action, in this case the article's controller show action here, and instead of fetching the articles globally, we need to fetch them through the blog. So we can fetch our blog here, again by the subdomain, and call request.subdomain to access that, and then we can go through the blog's articles association here, and fetch the article through that. So now when I try to reload this page here, you can see I get a record not found error because that specific article is not associated with the Pirates blog. Now you'll probably need to do this several times throughout the application, so I suggest moving this into a before filter, 
we can call it uh, load blog. And then we can define that method inside of the application controller so it's accessible everywhere. So we can say load blog here and then just do the same thing we did uh, before. So now whenever you need to nest resources through a subdomain, just slap that before filter on there and then you can always reference the models through that association. This works great for creating records too. You could create records through the blog articles association. That way they automatically inherit the blog subdomain that they're under. Now what we have so far is working great, but there may be a couple of extra issues that you have to deal with before using subdomains in production. One is that if you're using the www domain, then you'll probably run into issues because this is going to try to find a blog with that given subdomain instead of showing you the full list of blogs. Now to fix this, you'll need to go back into your routes file because right now it's directing any subdomain into the blog show action, but here we want it to skip the www domain. So to do this, instead of messing with a regular expression here, I'm just going to pass in a lambda so that we can use Ruby code to handle this. This passes in a request object and we can call subdomain on this. First we'll see if the subdomain is present, and then we also want to see if the subdomain doesn't match the www domain. If that's the case, then it should go to the blog's show action. Now if the logic inside of this lambda clause here gets too complex, you may want to move this inside of a separate class like I showed in episode 221, but this will work fine for us here. So now with that change, reloading this page here with the www domain just points to the fullest of blogs like we want. Now another problem you might run into is if you have extra periods in your top level domain. For example, if the top level domain here is co.uk, then it won't properly detect what is the subdomain portion of the URL here. Thankfully, this is an easy fix. Just go into your production environment config file and add in this line right here. This sets the top level domain length to two, which should be the number of periods in your top level domain. Normally it's one and that is the default. Now this option is new in Rails 3.1. If you're using 3.0, then check out episode 221 for how to do this. Well, that's it for this episode. We now have links that include a subdomain, which get routed to the proper controller action, and we have other resources that are nested under that subdomain. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful.